Hey guys, this is Jeb of Jeb's Music. I'm here to play some jellyfish for you. Man, I used to be. I hope you remember me. I was your daddy once. Wearing the sailor cap and dirty nails. To you, I'm just a picture on your mother's mantelpiece. Who chose to fight the good fight in time to fail? Into battle and in your shadow, your daddy loves you still. Yes, I do. I never thought that it'd be so hard to see you grow so fast and turn into the man I used to be. But I hope you have a more sense than I in matters such as these. Metals don't mean shit when a family is so lost at sea. Into battle and in your shadow, your daddy loves you still. Yes, I do. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I save every moment I've reached out and almost touched you. But they all fade away. It must be a bad memory. Into battle and in your shadow, your daddy loves you still. Yes, I do. Thank you. What a beautiful performance of The Man I Used to Be by Jeb. And I have Jeb with me right now. How are you doing? How's it going, Pablo? How are you? I'm good. I, well, I'm not doing these in order, as you can tell, by my d- different levels of disheveledness mm-hmm. um, and different T-shirts, etc. And uh, England have just lost, so I'm slightly deflated. But uh, ah. <laughs> not, not a huge football fan, but you know, you want your you want your country to win. Oh, well, of course. So yeah, good job I don't drink. Otherwise, it would not have been worth the hangover <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I drink a lot of Coca Cola. Um, so there you the, go. There you yeah, go. the the come down will be uh, will be severe. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, um, man, I used to be uh, an ambitious track to choose. Uh, d- why did you go for that track? Oh man, I know Roger told me the same thing when I told him I covered it on my album Future. Um, I actually <laughs> covered a track. I and I was so excited that Roger actually heard it. I didn't even care what he said. Never, never reviewed it or anything. But I was so excited that he heard it, so I had to cover it again. I just one of my favorite Jellyfish songs. It is probably one of the hardest ones to cover, and it's very cool. And I love the chords, and I love that it, it challenged me to learn that diminished chord that's in there. <laughs> and even then, it was just like I had to I had to figure it out. And I love challenges, and I've always been a Jellyfish fan since the beginning. And it's just exciting to be able to do something different. And I love. The belly button album so much <laughs> well with it being the first track on the album was that the first jellyfish song that you ever heard yes and that, oh, that wow. would actually be very meaningful too yeah i i think how i discovered them was through the posies big i'm a big posies fan everybody knows them they, they come over to my podcast uh, jeb and greencast it's all we talk about ken was our first guest and it was just been so exciting since then and uh so ever since i heard yeah man i used to be and uh, just been a big fan since i heard belly button and then spilt milk of course it's just blown away everything and I just love uh, all the stuff that they come out with. And then being able to talk with the Ligris Quartet guys was beyond amazing on our show. And it was just like, oh, it was a dream come true. <laughs> so was it a direct uh, um, recommendation from the Posies? 
Ben. Um, no, it was more of I think just mutual like groups of like listening thing. I feel like I don't think it was a Spotify thing. I'm trying to think because it's er- earlier before I got Spotify, like the recommendations and stuff. But it was just uh, actually, you know what? It was Tyler Green. Tyler Green, my Tyler Green, Tyler Green, yeah, he does a lot of mixing for my stuff. And uh, Tyler Green was the one that suggested you should hear this band. And then I showed <laughs> Owen Redford, and we just went from there. And it's just been amazing to be making music with those guys, and then to have that recommendation. You know, we have the similar style of stuff. I mean, we love Fan Club as well, and all that. So it's all in that same vein. <laughs> yeah, big shout out to Tyler as well. He's going to be working yes. with me on some of my future stuff as well. And oh, uh, exciting! Yeah, we Tyler's, a- Tyler's awesome. Tyler is awesome and it has a lot of patience for me because I'm not an easy person to deal with. When it comes- no, I'm not either. So that's why <laughs> we work good. I, I'm very uh, set in my ways and he'll bring up stuff and I'm like, no, no, no. And I'm like, you know what? I'll let it happen. And, we'll, and I let him do it. And I'm like, wow, why did I, why was I against that in the first place? You know, I love, love what he does. He's a great producer and shouting him out. And I got a new radio show coming out called Unlikely Places that's airing on Mad Wasp Radio in the UK and I'm in the States. So it's really cool. I could send that show over and uh, I got him doing a little radio intro for me on there. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, okay. See, well, that's yeah. the thing. I barely consider myself a, a podcaster slash interviewer, but uh, it's always slightly more intimidating yeah. when I have to interview someone who actually does this as a thing. <laughs> you're doing a great job. I'm excited. No, it's, you're Thank doing you. a great job. I love it. <laughs> um, uh, so did uh, did Tyler, because this uh, Jellyfest is celebrating 10 years uh, specifically of, wow. as I move my mic slightly in a very unprofessional way, um, <laughs> is uh, celebrating specifically 10 years of the page uh, and its members. Oh, wow. uh, so did Tyler introduce you to the page? Yes. Yeah, Tyler brought me right into joining a fan club and it's just something I, I'm so glad I joined. I was just talking to my dad about it too because I got him into Jellyfish and stuff. And I said, this Pablo guy started this incredible page and it's great. It's great to find power pop communities and then of course to find band communities that are around the band that you love and to talk with people that love the same bands. And then of course, you know, we also could talk about Imperial Drag. I see the shirts in the back and then I, and other bands that are related and I love that. And Licorice Quartet now being a thing where we all can now, young and old, celebrate and actually have the band grow up with us, which is incredible to see something with Roger that I can follow and actually be around and alive to see. It's great. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned it before, but I found Jellyfish in 2007 through one of Roger's solo albums. And it, it just seemed to be, every so often, there seems to be a burst of activity. In 2007, there was the Jellyfish tribute album, which came out on Burning Sky Records. Um, McFly released Babies Coming Back, which uh, got to number one. Um, and obviously, Roger with his solo album and the yeah. LEO album, uh, Alpaca Zorgling, with Andy singing like two lines. Uh, and-, <laughs> and that's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cool to have him you know it's just, even well, if it's two lines it's, it's incredible i didn't understand it back then my boss paid like 30 pounds with import charges and i was like for two lines are you insane and now i'm just like <laughs> now you get it Wait, we, we, we hired well, roger yeah. for our new album and it's it, it's worth every penny it's worth every penny just to get and he's only saying that he's voice acting as a radio host on there he's playing like an ed sullivan type host <laughs> and it's just so ex- he was excited to do it and it was just like i had to do i had to get him but it was just you know not just for the name i just love what he does and i'm very honored to have him more than just a name i was able to talk with him and communicate which is beyond you know any fan's dream is to be able to talk with these guys and then you know behind me on my wall i have uh you know you got the kingdom hearts side here all my gaming stuff but behind me on my wall that i stare at is all posies all uh the frosting on the beater album signed and all this stuff all behind me so it's all a posy shrine (laughs) i I, may i I totally get it and isn't it great that like you know bands that as a fly flies in front of me this is what happens when you only have the ring light on everything just goes yeah. zoom right yeah, onto the ring light. all the time <laughs> <laughs> um isn't it great though that like musicians that changed our life are there on facebook to ready to communicate and reach yeah, out it's, and, it's yeah. insane it's that's the only reason why i was able to get my radio show started my podcast started i just interviewed uh excuse me i just interviewed brandon O'Hare, the original teenage fan club drummer and I said, at the end of the interview, I took, I, I'm not afraid to ask questions. I, I, I'm not afraid to say, Hey, I have this idea. And if they say no, it's okay. Cause I know that they're bigger. I know I understand. Well, I said, I asked him, Hey, would you drum on some of my songs? And he said, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's to me, it's like, as a fan, like, holy crap. But as a musician, it's like, I understand some of them get it. They, they are like, yeah, we were at your level at one point too. We would reach those strings as well. And it's just very cool to, to have communities like, again, like uh, joining a fan page. I love it. 
<laughs> well, I think we we come uh, from a very similar uh, sort yeah. of um, area because I mean the guys I, I I'm lucky enough to get along with them and everything and work with them on certain things and they That's obviously incredible. are in support of the page and everything as well but they i ask far too much of them i'm the first to admit yeah that's that me I'm... and ken ken i always I always say to myself i like as soon as i message ken i'm like oh god if he does this here's he's probably thinking he's like god and this kid again but i, I they're, they're so nice and they they've done so much and like john hour called me when i was really depressed one time just to check in with me and like uh, getting that call was like you know through my mind in a whole loop it was like that's john hour calling and it was just such a nice guy and all these guys and it's just you know, I think they know what they're doing is special, but they don't think twice about it. I don't think they think they have to do it. I really honestly believe that they're doing it out of the kindness of the heart because it's just who they are. Yeah. And that's what makes their music even better. It makes me want to listen to their records over and over and over and over because it, you know, puts a, a, fa a friendly hand coming out of the record to say, hey, uh, we're here to listen as well. You know, it's, it's just really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, and maybe a slightly uh, cruel question, uh, but yeah. <laughs> with uh, the two Jellyfish albums, obviously they lead on to so many solo projects and stuff that they've done session work on. You know, um, do you have an uh, area that oh. you prefer to go down with that? Is it Imperial Drag, TVIs, uh. Jason stuff? I actually, this is going to be tough because I love working with Roger. I love all that <laughs> stuff. And I love Roger's solo stuff so much. And he actually brought me to get into Eric Barrow and other things, you know, things that he's worked on. And I love all those other projects. But with uh, with the solo stuff, I, I have to say, I'm sorry. I even love Beck, too. I've started getting really into Beck because of Roger and Jason. Yeah, but yeah. I have to go with Jason Faulkner's solo stuff. I am so into like not this time and and just i'm highly addicted to you know those first couple albums and and to follow his career but uh they're all good though <laughs> it's hard oh to pick. yeah well, and i follow andy yeah there's a, there's a great andy Sturmer um soundcloud page on there as well with all of his uh tv themes that a member of the group um oh cool made and uh, well that's that's what i love about the page is okay, I started the page, but it really is the members who keep that thing running. Yeah. And the initiative that a lot of the guys, and I mean, names who come up regularly on interviews like Kai Dansberg, who's running the Jellyfish yep, Archive page. <laughs> and we all love Kai. Yeah, Kai's <laughs> um, awesome. And Kai did, uh, oh, you should hear his work on, I mean, you will when Jellyfest is uh, yeah. up and running, but uh, he's amazing. And, uh, you know, the... Um, all of the things that have come off of uh, this, but you know, people have made t-shirts not for profit. Uh, you know, it's just so yeah. everyone can have a t-shirt. I mean, look, these, I mean, that that's the bootleg one. Uh, all yeah. of my jellyfish stuff is not at home at the moment for a reason, um, which I can't get into, but uh, the, hmm. um, is not a teaser. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, shh. Uh, but uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, t-shirts that were made, not every. I will stay up at like three o'clock in the morning to try and win yeah. a jellyfish t-shirt and all that kind of thing. And I happen to have a student loan at the time. So, you know, the fact <laughs> that, and, and don't get me wrong, none of these t-shirts fit me at all. Um, they're just, but, you know, they're part of it. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, what's funny about that is like with the posy is I went to one of Ken's solo shows because he he comes to Connecticut often to do a private show. And I'm and it's just I, I've gone incredible things. You know, we're talking about different stuff. And the one of the biggest thing was actually a friend of mine, uh, Dean Falcone and Shelly Vlacos got married and had the posies play their wedding. <laughs> and so Ken calls like texts me on Facebook. He's like, hey, I got a private show if you want to come see us. And I was like, well, I'm not going to say no to that. So I had to hang out with Mike Mushberger, Dave, Fox, the whole Frosting on the Beater lineup. And it was just incredible. You know, it's, it's a different atmosphere when you're hanging in the crowd with them watching John Bryan. Like it was just oh. John Bryan was there and I didn't know who he was. So I have uh, Frankie Saragusa went to me and he was like, I'm so jealous. You got to talk to John. You know, he's like a saint down here. You can't even talk to him. You know, he's like, and I'm like, uh, I hate to say this, Frankie, you're going to hate me. <laughs> talk to him because i was too busy talking to john and ken because i knew who they were uh, you know, i was more excited about them but he was insane he was really cool to see and of course now that i know the jellyfish stuff i'm like oh god i wish i really did talk to him because i didn't realize how much of an impact he had with them and i was like oh god <laughs> yeah i think he's uh just about on the level of andy in terms of you're not going to get yeah. an interview with him <laughs> so that, no, um, he's tough to talk to yeah and i was like damn i missed my chance but you know what i think there's a reason for that and the reason is is that i got to be there in the spotlight and enjoy what he does and this fact that I, nobody could take away that i saw him you know and that's mm -hmm. that's incredible oh <laughs> uh, well I, I mean we are very lucky as uh as fans yeah, yeah. it's uh, really cool that i've been able to uh chat with you for a few minutes uh at least because yeah. uh 
Jellyfest is a long one, good sir. Uh, so you know, like, as I'm saying, you know, get your snacks in. This is a this is a two day spectacular, nonstop. Of, uh, you know, <laughs> and this is why I had no beard when I started this. This is how long this has been going on. Um, so where can people find uh, your music and um, so to f- uh, you my find my stuff and also you could find another version of Man I Used to Be all on jebbsmusic.bandcamp.com. The a cover of an unreleased Posey songs that Arthur Roberts wrote and he gave me permission to cover. So I do oh, that one. Wow. And I do another, uh, I do a big star, big star on there as well. Uh, do a try again. And I also think I did September girls on that album too. So I just did a mix of covers. Uh, that album I believe is free to download cause I didn't get rights. So I put it up for free just so I don't get in trouble, you know, to try to, you know <laughs> share the thing. So, so if uh, anybody wants to check that out, you can get that one, but there's new stuff. Uh, Mindy slash. Yeah. Produced and uh, mixed by Tyler Arthur Roberts from the Posies, uh, Dear 23 era is playing lead guitar on that. And I'm, I'm, you know, singing and playing guitar. So it's, it's, it's exciting. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. And uh, Link will be my wonderful awesome. editor uh, and producer will be uh, putting oh, information uh, look, uh, <laughs> below as well. So yeah, look, I want to awesome. thank you for your excellent performance of uh, Man I Used To Be and I'm extremely grateful that you're a part of the page as well. Cause, oh, um, and you were one of the first that really jumped forward to, uh, offered to record a track for this i didn't think anyone would the level of musicianship has blown my mind um so yeah i'm uh very thankful and uh, jeb i want to thank you again for being a part of no <laughs> uh, being a part of jelly fest and uh and i want to tell everyone keep them peeled for what's coming up next all right